<clears throat> is this thing on? Um, hello? Hello? Oh, hey, what's going on? Ah, cool, cool. Yeah, it's just, uh, just your boy, young 334 God over here, sitting in the 334, hanging out on a Friday night, you know, recording a podcast episode, <laughs> you know, had all these other things I could have been doing, but I said, Psh, nah, man, I'm too cool for that. I think I'm going to take this opportunity to sit down or stand up and talk to y'all about an album. Ooh, what kind of an album? Hmm, are you interested yet? The album is, you'll find out in a second. But anyways, I'm Bearded Buddha. <laughs> Welcome to Wonder Soul, episode five. Before we get this show going, I wanted to plug myself in the show. Um, just so you know, you can listen to this on iTunes now. Ooh, iTunes. Yeah, that was, that was a uh, hassle for sure. It took me, <laughs> took me a while to get, get that going somehow. Um, and for some reason, I don't know why, but I had some issues with it, but it's all good now. If you got a iPhone, iPad, iMac, whatever, I, I, you can search this podcast. Um, on that device and on iTunes. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Just go to the search bar, bling, and search Wondersoul. W-N-D-R, solo, soul. My bad. Anyways, what else? Oh, yeah, Google Play Music. Psh, there you go. Another place where you can listen to this wonderful content, this awesome, interesting podcast stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's a podcast, right? Um, so yeah, Google Play. So if you have an Android or Apple device, no excuse, you can listen to it. Oh yeah, YouTube. Pfft, got a YouTube channel. It's pretty much the same shit that you're hearing right now and uh, nothing else. No no video of me, no face cam, nothing awesome like that. But it's, uh, hey, you know, you want to listen to it in the background uh, while you're at work on YouTube? Go ahead. You know, subscribe and, you know, smash that like button and uh, hit that bell and... Uh, yeah, you'll be in tune whenever I drop some new fire hot shit, okay? Yeah, so anyways, I think that's all the platforms, uh, and of course Podbean, but you know, I just wanted to get that out there that you guys have all these different ways to listen to this show because, you know, I'm trying to make it easier on you um, and anybody you want to share this with so they don't have an excuse to go, oh, I don't want to download a podcast app. I don't want to do that. Well, you don't have to anymore, okay? Other than that, before we get into the the meat and potatoes of this show, I just want to let y'all know that you can follow me, or, well, Wondersoul, uh, on Instagram at the Wondersoul. That's all one word, one collection of words. Uh, you can also follow on Twitter at Wonder Soul at Wonder Soul. Okay. Um, what else? What else? No Facebook. We don't fuck with Facebook yet. Um, YouTube already talked about that. Hmm. I think that's really it. Just checking my notes. Just want to make sure that you guys know how to reach me and contact me. Um, oh, yeah. Email. Why not? You know, everybody still has those things, right? Emails, Gmails, Hotmail, whatever. Well, you can email your topic ideas, comments, and feedback um, to me on the wondersoul at gmail.com. It's pretty easy. But um, yeah, shit. That's about it. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, you can hear me going through my notes, can you? All right. Yeah, that was it. I'm going to try to slow it down a little bit. Have a lot of um, a lot of fun tonight with this recording. I don't know if it's going to be super long because I don't really want to go in into uh, too much depth. But I just want to kind of pump the brakes a little bit. I know it's just me. And, uh, you know, there could be some dead air and some moments of silence. And I hope you guys aren't um, awkward in silence. But, hey, you know, I got to pace myself. I got to catch my breath. All right. I got to clear my throat. But um, yeah, so before I gave you all that boring, unnecessary contact information and ways to listen to the show, um, I mentioned that we're going to talk about an album. Well, for those who know me and those who don't, 
I am a, I ah, see, it sounds weird when I say it, but I'm a big fan of Aubrey Drake Graham, the, uh, the, the rap artist, or some people think he's a pop artist or a singer, whatever. Uh, but most people just know him as Drake, uh, that I'm a Drake fan. Okay. Uh, some of my friends have been around me when he's dropped some of those spontaneous without telling anybody mixtapes and we just pulled out some alcohol turned up the music and had like a really cool ass listening party i i just i really vibe with the dude's music all right what can i say all right Ugh, i'm not gonna defend myself all right i know he's popular now and it's kind of like the cool thing to not like popular things or oh i like that band but now everybody likes them, so I don't fuck with them anymore. Nah. You know, and if I don't like his music someday, you know, then I don't like his music. But I still liked a majority of his discography. Discography? <laughs> All of his albums. Fuck it, I can't talk. Um, so anyways, he dropped a new album yesterday, today, last night about uh, midnight for Apple Music, if you're lucky. Um... But for someone like me who has Spotify and an Android smartphone, I, I, I had to suffer and wait uh, until about 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. So not too long, but still, it's just annoying because as I was trying to check and see if the album had come out and the, if it was available on any of the streaming platforms, I was trying to avoid any not really spoilers because it's an album but people have already listened to it dissected it and we're talking about you know what songs they liked and different lyrics and shit and i was like no 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 i want a fresh virgin experience when it comes to listening to an album watching a show or a movie something that i'm really excited for and that i like and i've done my best to avoid any anything as far as i guess spoilers quote unquote but um but yeah i finally got to listen to it last night i threw on my headphones and i went outside and i took a walk and i just vibed out i listened to the um the whole thing now as i'm talking to you about three times maybe a little bit more certain songs a little bit more um it was i think close to 25 tracks uh, there was a side A and a side B, which is kind of weird if you think about it right, because it's digital. So if this was like an actual album or record, like physical, um, maybe that would make a make a big deal of you know. But it's it's not. It's I'm streaming it. It's all the same shit. But um, but yeah, I listened to the whole thing. And, um, and I actually had thought about recording last night. I was like, shit, man, I'm going to, I'm going to listen to this and I'm going to get, uh, get on the mic and just give my, my reaction to it. Like my initial thoughts. And honestly, I just, by the time I finished it, cause it was a lot of music. Um, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to sleep on it and then I'm going to listen to it again tomorrow and see if, uh, if my opinion changes on the the project as a whole or on any specific songs that maybe i liked maybe i didn't quite like you know i just wanted to give it a chance to marinate right um so i mean with, when it came when it comes to drake and his music and stuff i've always been a fan uh of him being relatable in a lot of different topics that he talks about uh his uh honesty and opening openness of just like different things that he's gone through in his life and just the vibe in general um 40 which is his producer he has been with him i think since day one and so that sound and production in the instrumentals and beats uh most of the time in most of his albums uh have always been uh fantastic and have always attracted me to that music even over some of the lyrics and styles of drake's actual voice and, and rapping or singing that the instrumentals have always been spot on and key so um 
the first time I ever listened to anything of Drake was, I think, on um, Thank Me Later. Because I didn't, yeah, I listened to some of the stuff on So Far Gone, which was a mixtape. And that had, um, I think that's the one that had, um, not over, that was on Thank Me Later. What was on So Far Gone? Shit, man. I feel really bad, but I'm not going to get stuck on it. But I didn't really fuck fuck with it um, at that point. I remember I bought Thank Me Later and listened to it one night. It was the weekend and really fucking vibed out with it. And then a year later, he dropped Take Care. And that's another favorite of mine. And, oh, he's just put so much shit out there since. I mean, he's become very fucking popular. Um, the reason I got into him was because I was a big fan, and still am, uh, of Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne is a big um, component to how I got into hip-hop and rap. And for some people, they'll be like, well, you don't like old-school hip-hop? You don't like Biggie, Tupac, and stuff? And it's like, well, not... Not necessarily, but then again, I haven't really given it a shot, and so I just stay clear of those uh, discussions, and um, so think what you will about that, but yeah, because Drake was um, one of Wayne's artists that he found and brought into Young Money, uh, which is his music label and stuff, and along with like artists like Nicki Minaj and stuff, and so that's how I got introduced, plus he was coming out with a lot of hit songs that were on the radio, and... It was just a new sound, in my opinion, that I just, I was like, ooh, this is different. This isn't like the hip-hop I had grown up with up to this point. And for some people, that's a negative, and for some, that's a, that's a pro. Yeah, if that sounds weird, it's, it's okay. I dropped the mic, and so I had to stop and delete whatever I was saying at that moment. But what I was saying is, for some people, that's a pro. Some people, that's a negative. Um so yeah, I've I've pretty much stayed in touch and in tune with everything that he's put out, uh, albums, mixtapes, and even songs that weren't on either, but just kind of put out there for everybody to listen to. And um, one of my favorites is "Nothing Was the Same," which um, honestly, I'm sure everybody can name an album, a song, or something that got them through a time in their life or was like. Um, very important to them at that moment that they related to and um, they attach with like a certain saga or chapter in their life and for me uh, nothing was the same is uh, that one for me I was uh, overseas at that time and I was uh, you know a Drake fan before but then that was just a really good album and just the sound and everything spoke to me at that moment in my life, especially being away from home and stuff, and just just the different vibes that was coming off of that album is one of my favorites of all time. But um, yeah, what else is there to really say about Drake? I mean, yeah, he's um, he's somebody that you could probably just look up. He's a guy from Degrassi. He does a little bit of acting, a bunch of different things like that, and um, yeah, so. There's like the discussion with him as far as is he a rapper, is he a singer, is he this or is he too soft and stuff. And you know, I think to be an, a true artist, you have to be talented or expand and and try different things in all different genres or um, to to move and think outside the box. That if you're just good at this one thing, you'll you'll be successful and get somewhere with that, but you know, it shows your creativity and your ability to expand if you have, um, I guess, multiple talents as far as like with him acting and trying different kinds of genres of music and influences. And you can hear that throughout all of his music and albums and stuff. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to cut to it. So Scorpion is the album that dropped today as I record this. Um, and I was excited. Uh, God's Plan was a huge fucking hit that came out. It's kind of meme-ish now. It's a little annoying because it got killed by the radio and just people in general. But it's still a good song. And then uh, Nice For What came out, uh, which was a, a good, fun 
uh, track for this summer and uh, definitely aimed towards the, the ladies. But, you know, I still love that beat, man. Oh, so fucking good. It gets me hype. And um, and then I'm up uh, I'm upset I think yeah that one when I first heard it I was not really a big fan it just kind of felt kind of mediocre and probably to some it still is but like I said sometimes you have to listen to something over and over again or give it another shot and you, you might change your opinion or it might change your opinion so for me that happened I started to really dig that song. Um, and so, you know, I was excited to hear the rest of the, um, the album, but you know, you had all this, um, this rap feud with Pusher T where they were going back and forth. It's almost like the, the routine now for Drake that before certain albums or releases, he, um, has to get attention in a way by starting some kind of shit or some debacle and. I don't know if he started. I don't. I, I just don't really pay attention to that shit. Um, you know, there was that whole thing with him and the Meek Mill and stuff a couple years ago, where he dropped like back to back and stuff like that. And um, you know, it's cool. It's interesting. But then again, at the same time, with the way hip hop's going, I think you know they're kind of moving away from that. Um, that whole rap feud, you know, taking shots at each other and stuff like that. Yeah, especially like when it comes to actual violence or, or anything uh, personal and physical but um, as far as like using your talent as an artist and a rapper or, or a lyricist to um, you know take shots back and forth I guess like it's it's a competition you know these these artists they they almost consider themselves um, athletes and you hear them compare themselves to like different athletes like certain NBA stars or uh, NFL stars and stuff like that and then those athletes look up to um, these rappers and artists and vice versa it's really it's kind of funny um, so my first take on Scorpion was okay this is good it's not great and it's not trash somewhere in the middle um I it like it like I had said earlier it was broken into side A and side B right so side A is more of the rap flex Drake right and for the most part and let me pull my notes real quick ah there we go yeah I kind of like listened to it earlier uh, and uh, was live on Instagram so if you guys ever follow the Instagram account I'm gonna start doing that a lot more with recordings. And just for other shit. But um, so I was listening to it again before I recorded tonight because I just wanted that one last final listen. And then I could just let it go and just, you know, have my say so. But like based off of like the lyrics and the subject matter, right? And then the, the beat and instrumentals, most of that side A was good. There was uh, a track at the beginning, I think it's the second one, where the flow was just really weird. It felt like. <laughs> and this isn't Drake, you know, um, but the beat was good. And um, but for the most part, it was it was pretty. I, I was satisfied. There was nothing that really stood out to me. Uh, there are some a handful of tracks that I want to keep listening to. But see, that's where I'm trying to not be biased because I am a fan of his previous work. And so I'm trying to take this in as yes, I, I'm a Drake fan, but also. I'm a fan of music, and if he, you know, laid an egg, I was gonna call him out on it. Um, well, not call him, you know what I'm saying. But I would, I would embrace that. I wouldn't try to def defend trash, right? And uh, so yeah, side A is pretty good. And then you get to side B, and it's more of that um, uh, singy, emotional type Drake. Um, and he speaks. And one of the biggest headlines of this whole album, and from that Pusher T. Uh, this stuff was that he had a son out there in this world somewhere and um, he he takes that head on I think uh, he, he talks about it um, especially on I think the last track of the side B so of the whole album I think it's called like March 14th or something he's literally telling us the listener hey this is the situation this is the girl 
you know, we met like twice, you know, not things aren't really that great. But yeah, I got a kid. He also mentions on, uh, I think, some track in side A where he's saying, um, you know, I wasn't hiding my kid from the world. Or, oh, fuck. See, now I knew I was going to screw that up. He says something either along the lines of, I wasn't trying to hide my kid from the world. I was trying to hide the world from my kid. Nah, fuck. I think I got that reverse. Y'all correct me. But basically what he was trying to get at is, like, the world's a fucked up place. I'm famous. I don't want to expose this child to all this stuff, especially when me and the baby's mother are not, like, cool, you know? And, I mean, Drake's been a heartthrob Drake, you know, heartbreak Drake is, you know, so he's all about the ladies and, you know, love and talking to so many different girls and shit throughout all of his albums and stuff. And, you know, to to kind of see this all uh, uh, come to fruition where, yeah, dude, you've been on the top, regardless of anybody's opinions, you're the, the statistics show that you've been one of the most popular rappers artists uh the last like decade plus and it seemed like you really couldn't do wrong there for a second and now like in his personal life and i'm sure there's other stuff but this is something that he was kind of hoping wouldn't have gone in this direction but it did and you can sense that throughout this whole album honestly um because at the end of more life which was his last project which was quote unquote a playlist not a um not an album, I guess. Um, but he talks about, you know, I'll talk to y'all in like 2018 or I'll talk to y'all next year and give you the summary, right? Let me put, put my notes back. Um, and so I don't know with this album what is um, current, what is a reflection of the stuff he's going through in his personal life, like recently, especially with this this child and stuff. And... Um, and what is just like almost there's some tracks on here that feel like leftovers of previous albums because i'm sure like i've never been in a studio i don't know how the process is but i'm sure that there's a lot of hit and miss and that when you're deciding your track list there are going to be some tracks that you go yeah we spent time on that we made a full complete song but it doesn't fit with either the theme uh the sound or it just doesn't fit out you know for other reasons so it kind of puts it gets put in the vault right and um you can you can kind of sense that with this and i think that's one of my gripes about this this project um is that there is a lot of there's a lot of music on here i don't know uh how i feel because you know on one hand you got people like kanye Pusher T, Kid Cudi, all of them, those albums that have been coming out, they've been strictly seven songs. But they've been so focused and good, in my opinion, that um, you know it leaves you wanting more. I think that you would rather have, for me, I'd rather want more than to be like, ooh, I've had enough, man. Or you should have cut it, you know, you should have Brett Favre this bitch like a while back, you know. And um, so with this and More Life, More Life was pretty hefty. And it felt like it had some of that leftover stuff. So I, I'm not sure what the strategy is for him in the studio. I don't know if he's just trying to, hey, y'all like my music. I'm going to go, you know, long periods of time without putting out anything. And then I'm going to just give you this, like, fucking Santa Claus uh, bag of music. And then uh, on top of that, right before the album releases. I'll be on a couple other rappers or artists' songs, so you're gonna get your fill of me, and then you'll, you know, you'll be good, and I'll be good, and I'll go back to Toronto, and I'll do whatever. Because some people forget he's from Canada. I don't know why. Um, so, yeah, I. So like the thing with Drake in 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 kind of walking that tightrope of being a rapper, flexing and all that stuff. Um, but then also having that like emotional R&B vibe. It's always been nice to listen to an album of his and, and, and getting that gentle in and out wave of each genre kind of threaded together, right? So one track you'll listen to is like a rap, you know, uh, version of Drake. And then the next one might be a softer, slower, but they feel very natural and... Um, 
you don't get really too upset. Some people do. I mean, with anything, some people are like, oh, I only like this version of this artist, or I only like this version, you know, whatever. Um, but with this one, with him kind of separating those two, um, it just kind of goes to show that it's almost like he wanted to do one or the other and make them two separate things. But instead, he made this scorpion, which is like a, a side A, side B of all of it. So I don't know. It's just a little gripe of mine because, you know, it's like quality over quantity, in my opinion. Um, you have the money to to get features, to get a, a bomb ass production, which I'm sure he doesn't have to do too much, when, especially when it's somebody like his best friend, uh, Forty. But you know, I, I feel like you have the resources there. Then maybe you're just creatively, creatively. Oh my god, um, <laughs> that is just kind of kind of burnt. Because I, I felt that way with Wayne. When Wayne was in his prime, uh, this is back before streaming services, but this is like the heyday of internet music, stuff like LimeWire, right? You know, stuff like that. He was putting out music and songs all the fucking time. And they were, most of them, and most of my favorite songs of him are not, you couldn't find on an album. Uh, because they just weren't. They were either on mixtapes, which were which are free most of the time, and um, you know that's the same with same with Drake. There's a collection of music that you'll never find on any of his albums or even the mixtapes. They were just put out there, like um, Trust Issues and Dreams Money Can Buy, Club Paradise, the m more recent stuff like Back to Back and Summer 16. Those weren't on. Uh, I don't think those were on views. Maybe Summer 16 was, but I know Back to Back wasn't. Um, and um, so when you come with an album or a mixtape, it, it should either have a theme, it should have a focus, it should be really clean cut. Uh, you know, a mixtape, you have a little bit more leeway. It feels like, hey, this shit is free. <laughs> this is either extras. It's either um, most like artists trying to come up put out mixtapes so they can just get their music out there and then they'll make an album, right? Um, and I know it's different now when you have Apple Music, Spotify and stuff like that where streaming is um, the mainstay and it's not all about record sales, it's more about your downloads and streams. So maybe that's why he puts out these lump sums of music because if he puts out an, uh, an album like Scorpion that has almost, you know, over 20 tracks and everybody listens to it, instead of uh, an album that's seven, you know, you're getting all those plays. You're getting so many streams. So it's almost maybe a business strategy. It's got to be. But, um, but getting back to like what I thought of Scorpion, I liked it. Um, I didn't love it though. And I've, I've kind of felt that way about his most recent stuff uh views came out in 16 and uh more life came out last year and more life is that playlist right so that's not even considered his albums he's only got like five studio albums it's uh take care thank me later nothing was the same views and scorpion those are his albums everything else like um if you're reading this it's too late so far gone what a time to be alive and more life those are mixtapes or just other different projects so this is his fifth album this feels like a um a mixtape this kind of has a similar vibe of more life and more life uh was good for what it was and there are uh, um, a handful of tracks on there that i still have on one of my playlists on spotify and i listen to to this day but that was still that kind of dancing you know jamaican vibe hotline bling stuff was it was oversaturated with that and, and there was a lot of european rap influence on more life and and you know when i listened to it the first time yeah i was like oh this is dope you know I'll, I'll give anything a listen one time but for me a successful album or mixtape is one that you don't find yourself skipping a lot of tracks the perfect album for me is one that I can just alright say we have CD players alright you put the CD in press play bam 
let it go until it's over. Like, I like every song. May not love every song, but I can listen to, you know, the whole project from start to finish. That was in Scorpion. Um, it's not that, um, especially on side B, side B kind of loses me here and there. But side A is pretty good. But even then, it just felt like just more music from Drake. It didn't feel like really anything like, oh, shit. Oh, wow. You know? Uh, maybe when you reach a certain part or a certain point of success, you, not that you don't try as hard, but what do you got left to prove? You know, especially when everybody around you is telling you, like, you're the fucking greatest, man. You're the best rapper alive, dude. Oh, my God. You know, that that must get to your head, even if you are the most humble, you know, person um, around. I mean, you see a lot of artists that we all grew up with and, and, and have enjoyed over the years they kind of seem like they're spent like there has to be a limit um to to that um over the over the years especially if you're busy and you're putting out a lot of content material music and stuff so there's got to be a limit right um but for the most part i enjoyed it i mean you know but that's also me being a Drake fan, so maybe someone who doesn't really like Drake would feel maybe I would say they'd feel. Hmm, they, I don't think they would go shout off uh, on, on on top of a mountain top and go, "Yo, listen to Scorpion, dude. This shit is amazing." <laughs> but you know, maybe that's just me because I, I already like his shit, and I like a lot of shit that of his. Even some people just have like oh i can't believe you do but um so yeah so it's good it's it feels um it feels different uh in the in the sense that i you can sense that he's going through some shit when you have an artist like drake who puts his life out there and is uh really open and honest almost to um to his detriment but you know you can tell when this dude is in a good place or a bad place and honestly, I feel like he's in the middle somewhere. And that's weird to me. Someone who's as successful as him, you know? But that's where you can't you can't think that because he's quote unquote successful and has a lot of money that he's happy. And that shows with the stuff going on in his personal life. Uh, I was talking to uh, my mother actually just saying – you know, these famous people, and everybody wants to be rich and famous, but you give up something, you know, that we all take for granted, and um, you give something up for that fame and fortune. Um, you don't know who to trust when you have money, right? You don't know who really cares about you when, you know, everybody's looking for a piece of the pie, and, and you know, when, you're, when you don't have all that and you look around and you got people that really care about you, then you know it's not because of what you're driving or, you know, how much money and the size of your house. So I'm sure that there's – that does something to the psyche. And, um, and it's not for everybody. But, you know, that goes back to Thank Me Later and So Far Gone. Drake, be, almost before he became famous, prophesied that he was and he was um, – you know, hesitant and didn't know if this is really what he wanted. Um, and I can understand because, you know, doing podcasts and stuff and, and putting myself out there, um, you know, or everybody's had this idea of wanting to be, you know, something that would be considered famous, right? In some form or fashion, you know, an actor, an artist, a musician, something, you know, there's that, there's that fantasy and daydream that we all, have had but then there's also the reality of like damn but then like all my dirty laundry's out there like all this stuff is on blast i i'm not only am i getting compliments but people are fucking tearing at me most of the time for no fucking reason other than they just don't like me you know so you're exposed and you have to have the mentality and discipline for that or or it will be your downfall and um so with scorpion i feel like he's just he's dealing with this i mean having a kid I, I can imagine i know plenty of friends who have uh kids and you know it's a big responsibility it's uh, a lot to take on raising another human being especially when you're 
you know, a younger or even older. I mean, there's no manual on raising a, a kid. So it's, it's a lot, especially when you're not cool with the parent. It's not your classic fairy tale, like everything's good. We're married together. We're in love. Oh my God, we have a baby story. So, but, um, but yeah, so I'm not going to give it a rating or a ranking. Well, I'm going to give it a ranking, but, um, you know, I'm not going to give it, oh, it's four out of five stars or seven out of 10. Hey, it's good. It's not terrible. It's not bad. It's a little over clustered, but you know, the songs that you've heard on the radio and stuff like God's plan, nice for what and stuff like that. Those are some of the better songs on this album. And, uh, there are some really good, um, good, good productions, I guess is the word. Like, uh, the beats on this are, even if you don't give a fuck what this guy's talking about or rapping about, you can probably still bob your head some and appreciate and respect the, um, the instrumentals. And, uh, it shows, I love soulful, uh, beats. I like stuff that's, you know, makes me get hype as fuck and want to just go either work out or go to a party or something. You know, I like that stuff. <laughs> it's, it's fun to me. And, um, so there's that you're going to get a little bit of everything. And I think Drake knows that when he makes a project now that he has different sides of him that everybody wants a piece. So you almost have to please everybody, even if, like I said earlier, I feel like he wanted to be, here's my rap flex shit. Boom. Take that. Okay. A couple months later, here's this like really singy emotional version, you know, that for the, for those who like that, here's this, but you know, that we got Scorpion. So, um, let me go ahead and give you some of my rankings. Cause I am a Drake fan. I thought I'd go ahead and give you guys some of my top fives or top threes. Okay. So when it comes to the albums, all right, this is my top five, okay? This includes Scorpion, and now this might change, this, and things always change, but based off of the couple listens I've heard, and I've listened to all of his other work, a uh, shit ton, okay? The number five would be Views. And that's probably the, my least favorite, but there are still some gems on there that I like, and there's stuff to appreciate, but... It's the album that I found myself not going to as much um, as the other ones. Not to say you guys get it. Anyways, number four, uh, it's going to be Scorpion. Um, so I, I don't know. Time will tell if I keep listening to this um, down the road as often as I've listened to his other works. But it's it's not um, it's not a masterpiece. And, and, and in a way, it's not a classic. Because um, like I said, an album for me is something that is start to finish. That I, I, I like. Not that I, I can listen. There's a difference, right? You can listen to a lot of music and a lot of different things, right? You can watch a lot of different shit. But to actually want to and go out of your way and, you know, show other people that music or listen to it while you're, you know, going about your day, you know, there's a difference. If it comes on the radio, you don't, you don't complain, but you wouldn't have picked it, right? So Scorpion's number four, all right? Number three is going to be Thank Me Later. Um, that was the first album I bought of his. Uh, it still will mean a lot to me, um, and especially in that point in time in my life, but, uh, but it was, um, it hasn't aged as well, maybe because Drake has changed so much, but I have to be in that mindset and go back to that time and place, and then I can get the full um, enjoyment out of that album. So number two would be Take Care, which is one of my favorites. A uh, majority of those tracks I really like, I have listened to hundreds of times. Um, that's the one that has um, headlines, um, which is one of my favorite tracks of all time. Um, and there's numerous other ones. I'll, I'll go in depth some other day, but I just want to kind of give you guys a ranking. So Take Care is um, one of my favorites, and that's number two. Number one would be Nothing Was the Same. I mean, that's I, I don't really know if, if it's the sound and the vibe, but um, that album from start to finish I, I listened to so many times when I was overseas. And, um, 
it was almost like thank me later uh, uh, is um what is it charmander okay and then take care is charmillion and then nothing was the same as charizard all right it just evolved and it was like oh this dude can't get better oh, okay okay oh i like this artist more now so that was kind of the peak um so let me go ahead and tell you though that there are all those mixtapes right like i said like if you're reading this is too late um what a time to be alive which is that one with future uh, more life and so far gone so i'm not really going to do a ranking on that but i'm going to give you my top five including all of those okay so number five is going to be more life um i know i have my shots on those like with like some of that the the vibe and just the directions of a lot of the tracks on there and that it was a little clustered but the ones the songs that i did like i, I still listen to this day and uh, enjoy so more life is number five um thank me later is number four um and number three is if you're reading this it's too late which is one of my favorites too uh from start to finish i can listen to is that rap drake it was he dropped it out of fucking nowhere i remember being so caught off guard and excited when i listened to that fucking mixtape and it was so good um take care is going to be number two and then nothing was the same so those two never really change those are my favorite drake albums um up to this point and i'm not disappointed about scorpion um i guess as we all grow older and just every day things are changing our taste of foods and music and entertainment it's going to change what you liked last year might not be exactly what you like this year right um so i don't hold that against drake and i know that my expectations need to be at a certain point and that you know there are going to be some songs that i'm not going to really jive to but you know for the majority i'm going to like you know what he's giving out there um you know I, I pray that that day doesn't happen soon that i'm just like wow fuck this dude this music is trash now um some people already feel that way but um you, you never know um it's happened with a couple other artists i know where i guess you would say they've fallen off and you're just like oh man i like your old shit and i know as a fan of anything uh of any artists uh like movies right for star wars for instance which is oh fuck man we'll have to have a discussion about that a whole episode but you know you got the people who like the original trilogy they um they're nostalgic towards it uh it means a lot to them uh they probably were introduced to that that stuff uh those movies i mean um at a certain age where you know made an impact on them i know that when i was a kid i they were already out all three of them um and i watched them thanks to my stepfather and i fell in love and then i was lucky enough to see the prequels and i like those even though a lot of older heads like old heads don't like the prequels and think they're trash and even <laughs> even i've kind of rewatched them and been like yeah yeah but hey man they're made by george lucas right so you can't fucking hate the guy who all this shit came out of his head right and at a moment in time and i think this is this applies to drake you know you're making music but who are you making it for are you making it for yourself uh is it are you trying to uh, appease your fans now more than you are trying to make the music that you you love and enjoy and i think that happened with george lucas it was just like okay everybody wants me to do star wars this way they want me to now make star wars for them which it's just you know hey this is just how he envisions the story right and this is how he thinks it, it should be and you know now people hate the disney star wars stuff well not everybody it's very uh polarized right um so that's kind of where we are with a lot of different things. I understand getting attached to, you know, if I were to say, well, fuck, dude, nothing was the same as my favorite album. Now that's basically considered his older stuff. I could be the one that'd be like, ah, dude, I only like your older stuff, dude, because Scorpion and Views are like four and five for me now, you know, so that nothing has reached that peak 
and um, it's hard. I, I can't imagine um, just reaching this point of success that it's hard to even plateau and maintain. You either go up when you're already at top, it's hard to go any further up. You, you Most of the time you're going to go down and you're going to disappoint some people. You're also going to please some people. Um, but you know, you never, you just never know. Um, th- and this is all my personal opinion, my personal take on his, his works of art, uh, this music. And you know, I, I I still love all this. Like he's, um, I'm getting a little blah blah tongue tied here, but with Drake, I was mentioning that he has a lot of music that's not on albums, and uh, I encourage you to check those out. You know, Club Paradise and Dreams Money Could Buy are some of my favorite songs ever, really. Um, and they just kind of came between albums, and um, I feel like they still should be recognized and listened to, even though. You, you wouldn't be able to find them on Spotify or something. You'd probably find them on SoundCloud or on YouTube. But, yeah, there's there's all this. Um, those could have been albums, you know, uh, in themselves. He could have took all that music and just been like, hey, here's that. But I think that's, like, down the road as, like, greatest hits or some shit. Um, but, yeah, I don't know if there's anything more I want to talk about when it comes to The Six God, OVO, Young, Aubrey, Drake, Graham. But, um, hey, this is just my opinion. I want to know what you guys think. Um, go ahead and give it a listen. If you, if you like this kind of music, you know, if you like hip-hop, you like rap, if you've heard any of his stuff before and you liked it, you know, go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. Um, you know, I'm not strictly into rap. I really love and have a passion for hip-hop now as far as uh, my music genre of taste or of choice, I mean. Um, but I'm willing to try out anything. So based off of, based off of the things that I talk about that I like and stuff, I want to hear your guys' suggestions on like, Hey, well, since you like Drake, you would like this artist, or since you like this, you would like this. You know, I, I, I'm always willing to dive in and try something else. And I'm always excited to be like, Oh, you just introduced me to my new favorite artist. So, you know, please. Tell me what you what you think of this and if there are other things that I would like or you know or anybody else would like and I can mention them on a show in the future. But yeah, I could go on. I mean I could get more in depth, but why? You know, maybe someday I'll I'll kinda do an album by album. You know what, fuck it, I will. Um I'll revisit these albums and kinda go a song by song. Not really a review, but just kind of a discussion. Because I'm not an expert on music. And music is art. And art is um, left for interpretation. You know, it's almost like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So, because I like a certain sound, doesn't mean everybody should. Or, you know, vice versa and stuff like that. Um, But hey, you know, he is very popular right now. So he's appealing to a majority of people somehow, in some way. And I think that's just from the diversity. But, you know, I've been talking way too fucking much. I was really going to make this like a shorter episode. And now we're almost at an hour. um, And I want to edit and post this tonight. But look, thank you guys for all your support. Listening to any of the other episodes. Sharing the episodes. Following all these accounts, I know it can be a little hassle and a chore sometimes, but it definitely helps, and it definitely helps me uh, stay motivated and stay wanting to put more and more and more and more and more and more episodes out there because that's kind of the hump I'm trying to get over. I'm just like, hey, fuck it. I'm going to focus on one thing. I'm going to sit down, record, bam, post, there. Instead of going through this whole intimidating process at least right now as uh, at this beginning uh, beginners novice stage and with what I have and most of the time just being on my own you know uh, it just helps to just kind of take that pressure off and just sit down and talk and you know that's what I like about podcasts so even though I'm not having a conversation with somebody else you know, I want to have a conversation with you somehow some way and uh, yeah, hit me up. Tell me what you guys have been thinking about these shows and these uh, these episodes and what I've been talking about. And um, 
give me some cool ass feedback but it is friday night i think i'm gonna edit and post this and jump on the playstation or something and you know bullshit a little bit and then get right back at it uh tomorrow but um hope you guys have had a good week um and are enjoying your friday or whenever you're listening to this and um enjoy the rest of your weekend and um i cannot wait to talk to you guys again so let's do it and don't forget to follow me on the instagram the youtube the twitter um and email me at the wondersoul at gmail.com and that should be about it oh yeah don't forget itunes and google play you have no excuse now okay and poppy but that's just me but i'm beard buddha this was episode five of wonder soul whoa shit this you know we're, we should have like some kind of goal here um about episode 50 or 100 we're gonna have some really special extravaganza some shit okay so um but yeah you guys stay good and i will talk to you later